llenos. Oh, I like these so much, but... Chocolate? Hello? Yeah, I'll probably be coughing times. But I'm doing better today. I'll post it. Oof. Yep, mine too. Cool. Alright, we uh, we'll get to start either. Back to acro. Hurts. But now nowadays all I perform is in all I perform in is my wheelchair. Ekro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at, a bu at business. Then one night, they decided to run away from it all, without me. Only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. Ringmaster took such incredible care of me. He was truly a lifesaver. Seems like the Ringmaster was truly a saint. <laughs> yep. We just passed that last time we streamed. Hi, Val. Hi, Val! Oh, crap. How are ya? This is my boomstick! This is my boomstick! <laughs> Seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. Ah, I gotcha. Well, hopefully it's not too busy. He was, that's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. Cool. Oh, we're doing alright. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I made a mess of that. That help? Skip it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Eh, too bad. And now look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Oh, she's wandering around because she wants food. Mm -hmm. Ball. Her Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. Hmm, I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina is so cute. She's truly a princess. Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Um. Mm hmm. Hmm. Do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? Um, I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? Nerves in my leg were badly damaged. Ooh. You can't walk now? I can't even stand now. Since I can't live on and since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. That's awful. Accident happened during an acrobatic session, right? Um <laughs> Oh. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh, he hides something. Get. A bigger time. Get. Bad. Good girl.
<laughs> Pretty much. Doesn't seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. Nope. It's on your mind, Mr. Wright. Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost six months since I was hurt. I injured my legs during practice. Six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus, then? Stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah. Uh, but there for rehabilitation? What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. What'd you see, Acro? At night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see, the scene of the crime was right below your window. That's when I looked out the window. What'd you see? He's flying straight up into the air. He? Maximilian Galactica. What? That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying? I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Nick. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds fishy. Yep. Circus Big Top. Oh no. Uh oh. Got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, Nick! Wonderful. Today's special must be Phileo Phoenix. Phileo Phoenix. Stay, stay, heal. Oh, Maya, Nick. It's you guys. I'm sorry. I guess I made a mistake. A mistake? Yeah, a little one. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. But I was expecting more of a monkey than a human. Monkey? Hey, Susan! Happy Hi, Valentine's Susan. Day! Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> the pity about what happened to the Dream Master. Dad? Everyone loved him, didn't they? He must have been quite a man. He was. I love my dad so much. I hate to say it, but she doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. That's why I feel so lonely. And I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? He dead, girl. Yeah. Leon died, I talked with my dad, and he told me that when someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. Oh. She's delusional. A star. It means my dad is looking down on me from the sky. That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. That's kind of sweet. But I bet you there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? Do you think that one day I'll be a star too? Of course. You really think so? Yeah, you will, I think. I got a feeling everyone is doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's alright with Regina. Go back and clear something up. <laughs> Why'd you want to teach Money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got he's got something that means a lot to me. Something that means a lot to you must be something really sh something shiny, right? Um, actually, it's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should. When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Okay. Hey, Mr. Attorney, huh? You saw that monkey, would you? You'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important to me. I'd choose gladly. Leave it all up to us. Guess there's no turning down that request. Yay, you're really gonna do it? Alright, we gotta present. This note. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what this is. Really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. What? It was in your pocket? This piece of paper was in your pocket. 
Hmm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time. Breakfast time? No, nah, they're fine. We took them for a nice long walk. No, they're not hiding. You always they take have been on my um, IA lately. Yeah. Well, everyone's just been busy. Yeah. Then we've gotten some pictures of Latoya. Yep. I'll take pictures of Latoya. You know that makes you want a cat again. Yep. You yeah, always take Akira's breakfast in the morning. That's when I also take out the trash in, the, in his room. Then I go to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realize a piece of paper was in your pocket? Yep, but since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged in someone else's pocket. And then what? I wondered if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did! I stuck it up there. How'd you know? So it was Regina who put it up there. When did this happen? Um, the morning of the murder, I think. That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this. out here. What's that? I hear something. Stop it, Nick. You're scaring me. Oh. Money. Nick, it's money. That monkey's holding something. That's it. That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? Alright, time to take this on this monkey attorney style. Give it back, monkey brain. <clears throat> Brack. Give it back. It means a lot to Regina. A real man wouldn't make a girl cry. <laughs> Yikes! Wah! He's not a man. I'm a monkey. Try to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. I really did. You know, man-to-man -man isn't really accurate. It was more like man-to-monkey. Man <laughs> Nick, you, you... I swiped it while money was distracted. Wow, you're really on the ball today, Nick. Let me see it, let me see it. Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you... Take you in at the circus, and I can get some peace and quiet. <laughs> hmm. What's the matter now? Doesn't fit me at all. Oh, well, I guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. But you can't be that much smaller than Maya. I don't know. Back to the big top. That's kind of weird. Yeah. There you go, Regina. Yay, thank you. You really got it back for me. Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney. It's... it's nothing. No wonder guys melt to mush in front of this girl. Hey, Regina. That costume is yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. Huh? This costume? This isn't mine. It was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that killed- that someone killed. Oh, okay. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down and then he opened his mouth, you know, gaw. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? Sure did. People in the crowd always love seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. Sure they were screaming because they love seeing you do that? Anyways. What was the bad thing? Oh yeah, Leon bit someone during that practice. Gina! Everything was alright though, right? No, it was not alright. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. That's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. Got it. Mm. Why? Six months ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He bit Acro? Yep. Oh. 
I bet you. Got it. As he said, he got injured during the practice. Right. Oh no. Something smells fantastic. So you know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Bistro de Cirque. A.K.A. the cafeteria. Uh, mmm, smells so good in here. Those burgers look great. She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. <laughs> My burgers are the best. Juicy meat, toasted buns, special sauce. They're absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you into hamburger heaven. I bet. I can tell by the smell. Whoa, I'm getting hungry too. Those burgers must have some kind of special power. <laughs> it's cocaine! <laughs> It's cocaine! <laughs> oh, what was his name? Sako? I don't remember. What? Sako? Oh, it was from Metalocalypse. Oh. <laughs> he was a. Like, I'm a clown! It does cocaine! <laughs> Dr. Roxo, the rock and roll clown. Thank you, Val. And you go knows all this stuff. <laughs> now that the ringmaster's gone, what are you going to do? That's all I've thought about the past two days. Everyone loved Russell. You've heard Acro's story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He's calmed down a bit now, but when he was livid when he heard about the murder, Acro was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yes, he was. Anyways, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. Been thinking of trying on the ringmaster's shoes. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? He may be a bit he may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. It's probably the reason the circus is still around. A lot of what he says is right. Oh. All that's left is, is to see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. Tragedy, you know? What is he talking about? Get over what tragedy, Mo? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. Dang. Dang, dang. Correct the mundo. I mean, mean ding? Mo, I mean no disrespect here, but are you lying to us? Uh, no, not at all. What makes you think that? Just the way you said, if everyone can get over the tragedy, it seemed a bit strange. It sounded like you were talking about something from a long time ago. Eek, eek, eek. Mo, I'm right, aren't I? Hmm, so now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. Give me a break. Us old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, eh? Okay. Time to break down the clown. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. When the world went on at the circus. Okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there! Some juicy burgers! Let's eat instead! Fortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Uh, actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident? This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would it? Take that. Heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during practice, right? How did you... As he did. Told him so many times. You shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting your head inside Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that, that the ringmaster went along, he could never say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo. Don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Um, I promise I wouldn't say anything. You promised? He's involved in this, too. Involved, huh? Mo must be talking about... Mo, is this the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything? That. Must have been Acro, right? How? How'd you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. 
Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No, no way. I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Acro. Just like you said, you know, the accident. Did someone die? No, but it would have probably been better if he had, if he had. What? How would you how would that have been better? He's still alive. But when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from the coma that he's in. What? Coma? All he does now is lie in his bed in the, at the hospital. That's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How's he related to Acro? He's his brother. Oh, gotcha. Huh? person who got bit was Acro's brother. Brother? They were an acrobat team of brothers, Acro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Anyways, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Um, who is Acro's younger brother? Sean Dingling. But everyone called him Bat. Fell in love with Regina. Trying to win her love was his downfall. Jeez. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Six months ago, while we were practicing, all of a sudden Bat blurts out, Let me perform with Leon. Why'd he do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. Never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. No problem. We'll be here. Some sick grin. No way. That's impossible. A smirking lying? A flying murder? Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all of these incredible events? Nick, can I smile? Um... We never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. Next day, the ringmaster took Leon and shot him with a rifle. Gotta put old Yeller down. Sad. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in the mood for a burger. Here, you two have some pepper. Shaka 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 shaka. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Ah, ah. Ah, uh, choo! Nice, what a wonderful sneeze. Huh? You think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana peel. That's basic clownsmanship. Girly, I know you you got it. understand that. Nick, I think I'd make a good clown. Oh, Lord. No, I agree. You would. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter, cuter sneezer. <laughs> does Regina sneeze with pepper, too? She does. That would always tease her with pepper. That? From my point of view, those two always look per so perfect together. They look perfect together, huh? Okay. Ah, Mr. Wright, back again, I see. Well, I did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? We're back because Acro's hiding why his legs were injured. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It seemed that he knows what we know. Well, well, it seems you've got things you want to talk about, so fire away. Tell me your secrets! I have to ask you, how were you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes. Unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it secret. Acro, are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? The own. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. I'm on the right track, I just need to keep going. 
You're saying that I was attacked by a lion? That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. No animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So let me rephrase that as battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it to save... You had to fight it to save someone. Bat. It's a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. Oh, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about Bat from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. Suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. Slip of the tongue? Anyways, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Cut down together, that was where he slipped, and that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident together, like always. I see, but an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. Stuff had broken in his last side clock. This, must, this one must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Acra, I know you are still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't like much is the reason you're being evasive. Hey, Regina. Regina. You always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regent tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> it wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? No, oh, maybe I overdid it again. But if I can hand something over to Agro, maybe it'll... Here's proof that you had it out for Regina all along. This. Where'd you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Hmm, I guess I noticed it what was there in there around breakfast time. I always take Acro's breakfast in the morning. You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. My legs were injured by Leon. Six months ago, my younger brother Bat had a dare with Regina. Oh. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go out Go to the movies with a, me on a date. That's insane. Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid, too. But that lion was very old to begin with. And age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this per this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened? He just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor bad. Leon chomped down. I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up... What about Bat? He's still in a coma. Went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. Still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. Bat and Regina, they were such good friends. Oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is a scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross, it's covered in blood. This scarf... It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the, day of the accident. Hmm. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh. When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Was it scented? Nick. I know, most of the same thing. What do you think it all means? I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. Yeah. Fucking Von Karma. It's Von Karma. I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. <coughs> that is for me to decide. 
I think we should begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I served a summon to a summons to Acro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Acro will talk more at the prosecutor's office. Acro, a witness? Come on, come Acro, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. Now what do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle it tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you all full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. Dun dun dun. Save that. I don't know, I remember where I got Sako from. Sako was from Mankind's Puppet. Yes. Morning, Max. Oh, yeah, good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Tee hee. Don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Regina. Oh, fabulous. My sweetie pie. My sweetie pie princess. Came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? What kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly it, fly at the end? Uh, it's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. See you later. Today I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. He is different, don't you think, Nick? Top of the morning to you. Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? Mo. Top of the morning to you, Governor. Uh, top of the morning? That's a ticket. Tacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm, but then again, worms like higher brain function. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my. Thanks. So how are you today, right? Well, I've got the feeling that today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. You mean Acro? Huh? You don't think he did it. You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line, literally. He's got guts to spare. All I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is. I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you going to do then, Nick? Guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Today we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro to the truth. You're right. It's going to be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. And she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes. That's why I brought her to court today. Brought her here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. Maybe an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. I do. So I shall be back. Okay. Beer be. Sleepy puppies. Stay. Looks very confused. Uh, -uh you stay. Willow, stay. You stay. Uh, 
Envelope. Bed. Good girl. Okay. Was that? Me? Okay, I'm back. <coughs> First down session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. Prosecution was, would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Order, order. I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor gumshoe. Poor, poor gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work, or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. There's birds. Oh, there's another one. Name and occupation. Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at a very big top, very big circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you'll see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you like? Would you tell us what you met witnessed? Okay. Just after 10 p.m. and I was resting in my bed. Around that time I heard a large thump noise from the outside the window. Then a few moments later I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that I thought I was dreaming. Hmm. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little prosecution very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross examine the witness. Foolish choice by a foolish fool who witness wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. Man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix, right? It's like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? The words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? No way that actually happened. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Light in your room was turned off by then. Off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. With the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was a person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Maybe there was a bit... something fishy with the latest bits of testimony. There's a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm, she's right, let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence? Yes, I do. Fell off. Claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The Silk Hat. What about the Silk Hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame because you would have noticed the Silk Hat found on the scene. That That's the Ringmaster's hat, right? 
right now, no matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind mo model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Oh, no worries, Susan. No worries, welcome back. <laughs> Which means, Acro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. Order, order. As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What will cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion? Accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we will accuse him of the murder of B Mr. Barry... Russell Barry. I had a feeling. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> well, I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try to grab an, at an audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the eldest bluff in the book. Really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. Calm enough for it to almost be scary. Hmm. <laughs> he just staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. That's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a murder, of all things. See? Even a sliver of common sense makes it clear that the accusation is ludicrous. He's right. Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless cruel man. <laughs> Phoenix is a poopy head. See that, Mr. Phoenix, right? You're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery. That's how you do it. Uh, I think that's enough of this little game. <coughs> Did I cough on you? Okay. She has my whip. <laughs> yeah, but she's annoying. Got a doctor's note to confirm that Agro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter them this as well? I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Order! Order! What the- what are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright, then let's do it. Phoenix, right? If this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. Spiky head. <laughs> Isn't. Oh shit. I forgot what I was doing. He's obviously here the entire time. <coughs> That's Acro's room? Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What? What say you, Mr. Dingling? An interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you propose is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? As a witness of stage, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you got a point. Seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix, right? The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? What 
But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask you ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm. How did he do it? That's the next course course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here, she's right. I can't mess up here. I've got to give this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the ringmaster. And he did it while he was in his room, no doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime. I think I can present evidence. Yeah, I can. I'm going to present some evidence. What did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? Oh, where is it? What are you looking for? Don't I have it? What are you looking for? The Max G bust. Oh, I think we just have a picture of it. Oh, there it is. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a ver quite a large bust, and because it is life size, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death, especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! See, this is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. The force of gravity and Maximilian's galactic Maximilian Galactic's ample bust. That was dirty. Order, order. So you're saying the bust fell onto the ringmaster? Rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. Well, Acro is an acrobat. It should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well, Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. Ow! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix, right? What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? On karma. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to stall for time. There's absolutely no need for such testimony. Defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. Defense's objection is overruled. Can he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. Witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Alright, that woman will sink to any low to win a case. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. It makes it impossible for me to know that, have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Nope. Hmm, I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It's impossible for him to lift the bus and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. This is shameful, really. I can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. You didn't really need to lean out the window, did you? Where are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I might add. I may add. You're silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But 
but I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wood box that the victim was found hunched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down is exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You you mean if the box were to, if the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. No. <coughs> order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. I just gotta keep going. There's no only one way to go from here forward. The next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Let me to whip you some more. Ow! Mr. Phoenix, right? Ow! 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 Ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Mr. Dingling. My Dingling. My Dingling. Oh, here. Five cheeseburgers for everyone. <laughs> Babe Von Car Monster. I no, mm. I'm not a fan of her. <laughs> Poem by Francisca Von Karma. <laughs> whip, 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 whip. <laughs> That's why the box is so specially made. Specially made, indeed. Had the most peculiar feature. The box has a remarkable weight. Wait? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and then lift it up with her body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has, has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That's correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool. Foolish, foolish, fool, fool, fool. That's annoying me. Yep. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. <laughs> I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You, you, did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright might have a vivid, vivid at nah. Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. <laughs> I grew tired of this foolish foolery of the foolish fools of this foolish country. Mm-hmm. Me too. Same. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Yeah, I remember. It was in the cafeteria. Fool is a fool who will only listen to foolish opinions of other foolish fools. Yep. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Then what happened to it? i like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? No need for foolish outcries or foolishly foolish fools. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplished. Accomplice. Foolish Art. fools finding foolish foolishness is the expect of a foolish fool such as you. <laughs> Those are actual quotes from her, too. Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Oh, I know. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no is place it, to get um, perplexed. The monkey. If money? Yeah. Gotta get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? Money. Money. A monkey? <laughs> oh, how Everyone knows money. makes a foolish face while dreaming foolishly foolish dreams. 
Don't be foolish. Foolish fool wearing those the foolishly foolish clothes yet again. <laughs> foolish fool spouts out more foolishly foolish travel. <laughs> Everyone knows money, he loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist ring. So, are you saying the witness had a mon monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Foolish fool with a foolish... Sieve. Sieve for a brain only speaks foolishly with foolish words. Inclined to feel sorry for a foolish fool who foolishly spends his time foolishly. <laughs> Of course he didn't Use order the monkeys. Else. Monkey stole it on his own, then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. <laughs> this has been my Acro's room. Francisco on Karma. <laughs> <laughs> but the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Beautiful. Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down and sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Wah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? Be easy for him to bring a bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Order, order. I said order. Miss Von Karma! Where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, um, I, um, uh, I don't know. Whip crack. Searching for it as we speak. Hmm. This is a rather strange turn of events. Well, let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was a murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought, thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we're mo we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. MORON! Isn't that the guy that wears the thing? Professor Godot? Mr. Wright's argument was so, was so circular, I'm a bit, still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water, there's no denying that. Ow! I love Edgy. I miss him. Don't seem so flamboozled. Especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? Forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix, right? And what is that? You should know. Forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! There's no reason to doubt the Cloudon's testimony. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Guaranteed to win the case in 23 cups of coffee Answer or this, less. and only this, Mr. <laughs> Phoenix, right? <laughs> Who was the murderer the clown saw? Just presented money, right? Yeah. Yeah, it would be this. He saw Max's... Ow! Oh, who was the other person the most on the scene? That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Does indeed have something to do with the question. Most said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Okay, I did do the right thing. How is that possible? Simple, really. What Mo actually saw was that saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It'd be easy to hang one of the, one off of the cards in the bust's hands. Idiot. Who in the right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Don't we caught me have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? Oh, I know. Fool! Him? You're saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? 
That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Hey, do you really have a handle on all this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. Oh, did he hit him and the cloak fell on it? Yeah. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright, so you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Oh, because he was still wearing the hat. The hat got knocked off. Akro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room, because that's who they saw, mm -hmm. and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than, ventrilo than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. The very instant that the bus hit the victim, You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix, right? As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this isn't just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. What? The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak back up, which snagged onto the bust. That impact also caused the sound of a certain witness the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Akron naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Moe saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it, primarily because in his wheelchair he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. Da, 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 da. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off, the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene, Acro. It could only have been you. Don't care. He's so unbothered. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. Sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? The evidence? This court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Ugh. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get us out of this Get out of this jam. Easy. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence that to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick of the magic case. The hat. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those samples were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all those contradictions. You fool, do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Moe said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat only one explanation for that. The silk hat that, saw, that Mo saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? 
Remember what that ventriloquist said in the court. He said that the wit he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. The cloak snagged onto the bust. What happened to the, ro to the white roses? It folded in. You get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust. It means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! It explains why Mo didn't see them. White roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Order! Order! God, imagine if lawyers actually had to do this. Really do. This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Yeah, true. This wouldn't be a problem if the cops in this universe had any kind of procedure. Oh, gumshoe. And if there was a penalty for perjury. That's true. Let's do this, Nick. The maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Doubt it. I doubt it. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think I, that I didn't? I did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Because he wasn't expecting to kill the ringmaster. He was probably trying to get Regina. Yeah. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Acro's story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deeply respected the ringmaster. Acro's motive. Hmm. Seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I'll listen to the rest of Mr. Dingaling's t testimony after recess. This court will now take a 10 minute recess. Da -da -da. <laughs> Let's do this. Can't believe it. Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? Definitely is, and I think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, am I that hated? <clears throat> Acro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He he did? Psst, psst, off. But, but, I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? But you're not, which is kind of the reason why. Off. Hey, hey, pal! You gonna ignore me after all this... Tr <laughs> well, I went to bring you some evidence. <laughs> Ah, Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe. Ah, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. <laughs> now, now, Detective, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? Got some really tasty milk. How about a card trick, Detective? Oh, well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned, what is it? There you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yep, and I've included the forensics results. Take a look at it later. Won't Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret. <laughs> Welcome back, Susan. Or wait, was she gone? Earlier, was she oh. come back? Gotcha. Sorry. Because I thought she had. Huh? Look, details are on a need-to-know basis, and we're not really allies or anything. But everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know. Miss Von Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday our final plans were set in motion? 
Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me, I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part. I'm not sure. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ah! Don't scare me like that! Looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire da dairy's worth of milk? For me? Such weird shit. Yep. Court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would, would have to commit this crime. Well, hold on. Let me take a look at this for a second. Yeah. Regina did it on purpose. Sneezed. Lion sneezed. Yep. Motherfucker. Understood now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor? Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. About the Ringmaster. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the very big circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat around nine years old. Wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim, which is also why he wanted to off himself after he found out. I wonder how anyone could think that Acro would kill the man he held in such esteem. You're absolutely right. How can how could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Jabali, there's no real need for cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's a question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the Ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. No. No need to cross-examine this witness. What's that? Why was the Ringmaster murdered? There's no need to delve into that bit of testimony when I know the answer already. Mr. Wright, I'd like you to ask I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I'd just like to know. Can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want the Ringmaster dead? I can't provide one. Hey. Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor. The reason that Acro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? It's because Acro had no reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool fool us like foolish fools is so foolheartedly foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was, this is the real killer of Russell Berry Ringmaster. You want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro. You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What'd you say say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not the Ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Order, order, bailiff, I don't care who it is, smack anyone who's loud in the face twice if you must. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do in my, to my court? Ow! Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to this court? Are you attempting to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? Yeah. Regina Barry? This young girl is the Ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro, you were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? You don't need to answer that, it's a mean-spirited leading question. You could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is, you're wrong, that's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough. Mr. Wright, allow me to... Ow. The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. 
Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix, right? Show me evidence, now. I want to know why Akro would want to kill Regina Barry. Yes, me too. I demand to see some proof. Is that evidence that proves Akro is go out to kill this young girl? Akro, you remember writing this. You remember this, don't you? That's... It's a piece of paper that we found inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Akro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. The purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I meant. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Berry. Order, order, order. Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours. It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed on the cafeteria bulletin board. That's when her father, I mean the ringmaster, saw the note? That's correct. Ringmaster ended up in, in that plaza instead of Regina. He was killed because of that mistake, instead of Regina. That's, that's, that's incredible. Remember the testimony that Akro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bus and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Akro had no idea who it was that arrived in that plaza. Because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. <laughs> I've got it, I've got it. Akro thought it was Regina down in the plaza. And that's when he let the bus fly. Hey, Nick, isn't Regina listening to all this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. Akra wrote this note to Regina. Foolishly... Man, I missed a good one. It had a lot of fools. Mm -hmm. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix, right? If you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes? What about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Berry, it would mean that this note is declaring that Regina Berry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? The ringmaster knew what that note meant, which is why he went to the plaza. In place of his lovely daughter. Hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. An incident occurred six months ago, and now I am more than more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron! Wait, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case has its start in what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um, I think so. Well then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. If I can't answer that question, the judge is going to think I'm bluffing. The conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is... Actually... What? This is it? Oh, nope. Nope, sorry. Messed that up. Sorry. Wrong evidence. Conclusive evidence. Seasoning bottle. Inside the wooden box, the victim was hunched over. It contains pepper. Hmm. A chew, 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 chew. <laughs> chew, chew. What kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix? Right? It isn't a joke at all. It's a decisive evidence you asked for. What do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of Decisive evidence is what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you can draw. 
foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question. Who is Regina's Barry who is Regina Barry's intended victim? Crazy. There he is. Who is this? As Akro's younger brother. What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead. Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Akro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him? You spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Akro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into a, his current comatose state. A lion? Regina, I mean Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no, train, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Yeah. Moreover, Miss Regina could never, could never do something like that. It's just not in her. Hmm, so then, what happened to Acker's brother? He's not the victim of an attempt at murder, he's the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? Lion biting Bat was no accident at all. What? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix, right? There's no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being, but Regina is responsible for making the lion bite Akro's bre brother, Bat. Now it's the scarf. Right. Yep. That's... that's just a scarf. Akro. The scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who's the one that gave the scarf to Bat? Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina. There's something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Regina gave the scarf to Bat right before the accident. And she covered it in as covered it with as much pepper as she could. Hey, what's with the silent treatment? Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've done a good job of fingering a criminal. But out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um, Barry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? Still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Phoenix Wright. Wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? Lion was smiling? Right before Bat was bitten by, bit by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? Never heard of them smiling, however... Lions sneeze. Leon wasn't trying to bite Bat at all. In reality, all he was actually... All he actually did was sneeze. Ow. Mm. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. What?! You fool! You gotta be kidding me! Objection. What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I, I, I object for objection's sake, <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright. You, this theory, you believe it? Really intend to say that this is, that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do, it's the truth. Lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Akro nearly lost his brother due to this accident. Or this joke, as you put it. Yes, she is. <laughs> it's, it's time for dinner for her. So which, is, which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot. Ha! <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. I think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Akro, you don't mean- you can't mean- witness! Are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright, unfortunately your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the lion. I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. 
Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? Same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I drop Max's bust onto the to on top of the Ringmaster, where is the evidence that proves your proves that claim? Uh... You mean the conclusive evidence? Biggest problem is the murder weapon, or the lack thereof, to be more precise. Murder weapon. The bust that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Acro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. The bust. Nick, you've got to do something. This is the last step. If we can get, if I get this one right, the case is won. Might be worthwhile to search after his room, but why aren't you going to search his room? Looks like you finally figured things out, didn't you? Now you know the true meaning of Von Karma total justice. I guess. I figured with you, that's the least I should expect. You'd leave no stone unturned. Von Karma never leaves anything to chance. We already searched Akira's room yesterday. What did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Akira would not be here as a witness. But to put a, but to put a point to it, on it, Max's bus was not in the room. Murder weapon is still account unaccounted for. See, Mr. Wright? The bus wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise. And we took Acro directly to the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. Just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. It's on his fucking chair? Maybe? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Looks like you like the final nail to put in my coffin. But, but, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here... ...that which pertains to the death of the Ringmaster. You should know that by now. Arg, Do something, Nick. Don't let this case slip away. The bus, where is it now? Hmm. Where's the bus right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where that bus is. I'm sure you do. Not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? Seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments have looked to have, fa have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ack. Terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Hold it! Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to, pre to prepare to present its l its lace. I mean, case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do you really have a case to present, Mr. Wright? What? Why are you asking me? Rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. Hey, wait. You can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Acro's lived his life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well, defense, defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll fi be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope of logic, there's no room for a false step. Sink or swim, the only way through is forward. Murder weapon. Where is Max's bus now? It's obvious. The bus is in the, inside this very courtroom. It It's obviously where? I mean to pinpoint the location of the bus once and for all. Acro, I'm sorry to ask you this, but do you mind if, if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? Sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be real easy to say, hide a bust under there. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. 
I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bus is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it, and the only place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Akro, I have to ask you once again, would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. You! You fool! How could you? <laughs> You've got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Francisca Von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch a surprise search on my room last night? There were two pieces of evidence, decisive evidence, the cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust, obviously I couldn't throw that away. You executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place that I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of court holding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. You've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm. All makes sense now. Can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Uh-huh. Definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. Can't believe it. Me. Make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that. Seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor? Did you kill the ma ringmaster of the Berry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Berry? Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he te he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. That's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen, I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times, too. But I just couldn't forgive her, no matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina believes in that so purely. That she would laugh innocently when saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina? How dreadful. So are you saying that you are a victim in all of this as well? No. That's not what I mean. Nothing but a murderer, that's who I am. At first I thought I'd kill myself, then I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave, I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... Just couldn't up and leave yet. Has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again. I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Not guilty! Yeah! Court is adjourned. Oof. Defendant lobby number five. Fabulous. But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Acro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question, and one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only at max, a million of them. <sighs> Thank you. What's with the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Oh yeah, they're all awake. They're ready for their dinner. Huh? 
Wah! He's been like this for a while now. Wah! It's all my fault! Wah! Sweetie, sweetie pie. Wah! Bat and Acro, they're never coming back. Now, now everyone's gonna split up. Regina, Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? Acro said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. That mean Acro? Is he going to try and get his revenge on me? I don't think so. Yeah. He's not going to do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? You really sure? I can believe that? Yep, Acro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. That's true, then I want to see some evidence. Huh? I want to know you're not just making up that, that stuff about Acro not wanting revenge. Because his brother's still alive. Acro didn't want to get caught for a reason. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. Bat. That's right, Regina. He's still alive, you know. I never knew. But now that Acro's been caught... Uh-huh. I know. What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to Bat as long as it takes. Until he opens his eyes, and then he can... And then until he can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm so sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well, hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max. What is it, Mo? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. So whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? Uh, that's a big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone is, stu is sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I decided that I will take over as a new ringmaster. I'll turn the circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. Best circus the world has ever seen? Don't laugh. It's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait. I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max? Let's work together and make our circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um... Regina, you're going to help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think that I brought you to court today? Uh, we've got to work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been. Mo. Mo's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the very big circus without Regina Barry. Max. Nick. Seems like everything is going to turn out all right here. Can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. Save you the most fabulous seats. It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm going to order special whoopee cushion seats. Ha 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 ha. Let's see, what made the case? Yesterday's surprise raid it really paid off, just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? Just a theory. Oh, this is fucking Edgeworth. If Acker really was a killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. Yeah, it's Edgeworth. Hey, Mr. Wright? Of course. Well, Detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Acker's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the Chief Prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. Hold it. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Edgy! Edgy! Stop. Errol, what do you want to do? We can stop after her. Hang out. Okay. Yes. Edgy's back! Edgy! Yay. I like Edgy. Alrighty. So we're going to call it here. We're going to stop. We're going to go have dinner and hang out ourselves. Get the doggos dinner. Yep.
get them taken care of. But thank you all for showing up. Excuse me. <laughs> Anyways, you all have a good one. Have a good day, guys. We're gonna call it. So, see ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.